Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on the Gospel lesson just read, The Signs of Christ's Return. You will see that the laws of nature inevitably break down into death, but that the word of the Lord, which endureth forever, has the power to carry and sustain you into eternal life. Again, the Savior says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So far the text, let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. During my college years, my favorite pastime was to wander about and people watch in the greater metropolis of Boston, Massachusetts, guided by nothing other than historical landmarks, local storefronts, and mental memory, I navigated a city of about four million residents and several centuries of infrastructure with ease. Today, I can't find a house in Hecla, a town of less than 200 people with five streets. I can't find anything in Hecla without a cell phone. And to think, way before any electronic gadget, people traverse the globe by tracing the stars in the sky? Scary to imagine, no, were the grid to go down Everything you trust to guide you gone in an instant, would you be able to function? Better start learning astronomical navigation now while you can still Google it. Well, in our gospel lesson, Jesus says the day is coming when you won't even be able to follow the stars. When Jesus says, the powers of heaven shall be shaken, he warns that those most reliable features of nature up there in the sky will go haywire. The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall. And when they do, unsurprisingly result in perplexity, men's hearts failing them for fear. Which means on that last day, when the grid goes down for good, every crutch you use to navigate life will slip out from beneath you. The laws of nature you take for granted will no longer function as you know them. Now to properly understand what Jesus is talking about here, we have to first stop and consider how all the sun, moon, stars, everything beneath, it only does work as it does because he keeps it going. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, not only did the eternal word make something out of nothing, but he gave to that something a mind-boggling order. When the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That verb moved is no glide, but a shaking about, an assembling together. God didn't just make stuff. He put in place every rule and law of how that raw material would behave as long as earth endured. The stuff you and I call atoms and electrons the tiny oxygen combustion engine within each living cell, the fundamental force of gravity, what, must, what goes up must come down. Even, even the unquestioned manner in which light, poof, fills a room. Take careful note, God created light the first day before he told light how to behave. 
to you and me, where else would light come from than the sun, moon, and stars? But if that stuff above wasn't created until the fourth day, a, a full 48 hours after the first, how did light behave before then? I have no clue. Yet we take for granted how it does as if it always has and always will. Every bit of technology we have developed for centuries now, completely dependent on that never fail way the sun, moon, and stars behave, including the technology of all those little lights you stare at on your cell phone. That too only works because God told the sun, moon, and stars to keep in motion and has never yet told them to stop. But of course, God is not just the author of the laws of nature, but of every law concerning how you and I should be the spiritual laws of basic moral conduct, which we too take for granted. In the assumption that you should be treated a certain way despite the many excuses not to do the same. How little we think of the bigger perspective and the chaos which ensues from everything you call a simple mistake or a slip of the tongue when you genuinely have no clue why you behave the way you do. Wouldn't it be nice if we sinners were as consistent as a science experiment? If people were as reliable as gravity? Sadly, we are. In engineering science, there's a saying, anything that can go wrong will. And of us sinners, the Bible, in essence, says the same. As in the Apostle Paul's eureka moment, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. And the prophet Isaiah's self-obvious observation, all oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. Or as our hymn puts it, Left to ourselves, we do but stray. Human behavior is in, in, is in a perpetual motion of departure from God and his truth, ever deteriorating up until the point when even the oxygen combustion in each little cell stops working. And you, who many years ago learned to walk upright, fall into the grave. After all, what goes up must come down. You see, Jesus' words, heaven and earth shall pass away, that includes you and me, whom God made the sixth day out of dirt. For it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You think it's a scary prospect to lose our artificial grid? That might not be so bad for us. But when all things go down for good, how do you begin to prepare for that? Well, you certainly don't prepare by observing anything in this world about to fall. But by turning to the word of the Lord, behind and beneath it all. And the good news is, for that, you need look no further than Jesus. Because in him, Christ Jesus our Lord, the word which gives order and pattern to everything, was made flesh and dwelt among us. When stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay and 
wise men with astronomical charts not even Google can explain made their way to bow before wisdom incarnate. As true God, Jesus consistently proved himself adept at manipulating nature to his liking. When, like an alchemist, he turned water into wine, put the medical field to shame by forming functioning eyeballs for a blind man out of mud pies, and rose above basic physics when he walked on water, as if not one rule applied to him when in truth he'd written them all. Yet as true man, Jesus submitted himself to those laws by living the vast majority of each day under the same physical limitations you and I do, which is the meaning of the dwelt among us part of that Bible verse so central to our Advent Christmas hymns. Dwelt among us in that Jesus operated within and beneath the laws of his own making, both laws of nature and of righteousness. Those moral laws, which on account of our sin inevitably break down in the end, Jesus alone upheld each one to perfection, yet chose to so dwell among us as to know even what that was like for everything to fall apart. When taking personal accountability for every rule you have broken, as if he had, the Lord of creation was nailed to a tree, held up there in the sky by the power of his saving love alone, until he fell victim himself to basic gravity when he dropped from a cross into a grave. Also, Jesus could set that unbreakable principle, what goes up must come down in reverse by rising again from the dead, thereby changing your eternal end. You see, that's what Jesus means when he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. It's not as if this physical world will just someday, poof, be no more. Take a good look at what those words of his say. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Unless you miss the message, Four times, Jesus said, and I will raise him up again the last day. As the words of scripture plainly state, this corruptible will someday put on incorruptible. This flesh which fades like grass be reconstituted into flesh which will never fall apart again. All according to to the word of the Lord, which endureth forever. That final day, when this grid as a whole goes down for your eternal good, to come right back up with you, for you, to live in a glorious new creation, with no other rule than there be no more sin. No more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, nor any such thing. All those former things passed away. Now Jesus says to be prepared for all this, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and remain standing before the Son of Man. That preparation is nothing other than faith in him. Faith in all these, his words, eternal and unchanging. Yes, he comes to judge the nations, a terror to his foes, but a light of consolations and blessed hope to those who 
who love the Lord's appearing. O glorious sun, now come, send forth thy beams so cheering, and guide us safely home. Till then, dear Christians, make good use of it while it lasts. It's still here, and for the time being, still working as designed. Make good use of every which way this creation operates in service of the Savior by whom all things were made in the first place, for without him was not anything made that was made, and at least up to the current moment of this sermon, he is still upholding all things by the power of his word. Held together and still operating as good as it ever has on account of the same grace by which he keeps the sun, moon, and stars hung in the sky. Take the time to appreciate it while it's still yours. Which especially this season of Christmas, so filled with clever little lights, crafts, and craftsmanship, means taking the time to put down your cell phone, walk about your world, and people watch guided instead by landmarks and handiworks, maybe even those stars which look down where he lay, to take in the wonders among us of the recreative ability our Creator has put into every human heart. That genuinely curious in whatever it is your family and neighbors like to do, you might seize the opportunity to manipulate any small talk which might ensue into the kind of words which last forever. Yes, the sun, the moon, the stars, all these playthings of our design beneath, they're all tempered. But you have nothing to lose. Not when the Bible promises it only goes down to come back up better than before. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.